Well, there is a very, very big election taking place tomorrow, as everybody knows who's watching this video. And even though we may not necessarily know the results of the election tomorrow night, we still will be learning very soon who our next president will be. So I wanted to take some time to share what we can expect depending on the result. So if it is the case that Joe Biden emerges victorious and he defeats Donald Trump, I think that all of us owe it to ourselves to just breathe a long sigh of relief knowing that we got Donald Trump out of power. Now, he may go very loudly and whine about it. He may be insufferable for a couple of months, but so long as we got that victory, his time is limited. That's a good feeling. And there hasn't been much to be hopeful about as of late, but we can at least know that he will be going very soon and the Trump era will be coming to an end. Having said that, though, the end of Donald Trump's presidency does not necessarily mean that Trumpism is going to go away. In fact, I think it could be with us for quite some time. And if Joe Biden does not take substantial action during these next four years, then I think it's a guarantee that we're going to see someone emerge in the future who is much worse than Donald Trump. So here's what I say to everyone. If Joe Biden is elected, the left liberals, Democratic Party loyalists, people who are not Republicans but don't necessarily like the Democratic Party, independents, now is not the time for brunch. Yes, it is the case that Joe Biden is not Donald Trump. He will be better than Donald Trump, not do as much damage as Donald Trump, but acknowledge that Joe Biden is not your friend. He is your political enemy, and we must resist him. Make sure we apply nonstop pressure on him and make his life a living hell, because guess what? The Democratic Party establishment moved heaven and earth to make sure that Bernie Sanders was defeated and we got anyone but Bernie. And Joe Biden happened to be the person who has resisted change at a time when our country and planet need change more than ever. Now, understand, it is going to be almost impossible to push Joe Biden left. He is going to resist change. He's going to embrace corporatism. I wouldn't be surprised um, if he stacked his cabinet with Wall Street executives. Having said that, though, that doesn't mean we don't try to pressure him and try to move him left. And where the left is going to have any, um, I think, sway is maybe stopping him from doing the most harmful things. Because remember, when Obama was in power, he got away with doing a lot of terrible things because the media applied no pressure to him. He faced zero scrutiny and let the Republicans basically run roughshod on him while he just sat back and pretended as if he was hopeless in the situation when we know now that that's not necessarily true. He didn't do a lot of things because... He is a moderate Republican. That's how he described himself. So we have no reason to just wait and give Joe Biden a chance. If he's lucky enough to be elected, we have to immediately make his life a living hell unless he actually is willing to listen to the left. Do I think that's going to happen? I'm not too optimistic about that because guess what? Uh, we have an extensive record that we can look at with regard to Joe Biden and see exactly how he's going to govern. So if the left uses this time to uh, build our coalition, make sure we increase our political power, then we can actually make some really good use of this next four years. It's not a guarantee that fascism is gone forever. Trumpian politics will probably remain a thing. It will be pretty prevalent within the 2024 primary. So we have to make sure that we stop that from happening. How do we stop that from happening? We try to pressure the Democratic Party as hard as it may be to do at least some things to materially improve people's lives. And if uh, Joe Biden can do just a little bit, he can stop a future disaster. Now, what I'm anticipating is Joe Biden to basically... <sighs> Do some good things via executive order. Reinstate the DACA program, right? Try to get us back into the Paris Climate Accord. Uh, try to do something with regard to the Iran nuclear deal. Some things that, of course, are indisputably good, objectively good. Uh, the problem is that a lot of the things that are good that he wants to do can likely be undone 
by the next president, assuming that he just kind of like doesn't make any strong legislative pushes and does a lot of things via executive order. But he can do a few good things. He can mandate masks nationally and make testing for COVID-19 widely available so that way we can purchase them ourselves online or at grocery stores. This would be huge in containing the spread of the virus. He may capitalize on the opportunity to raise the minimum wage, and he says he supports $15 an hour. Let's see if he holds strong. I have a feeling that if Democrats even try to raise the minimum wage, they won't opt for $15. They'd probably opt for $12 instead. Um, we'll see what happens there. You know, I think that he's probably going to take executive action to expand healthcare where he can. I don't know that he's actually going to try to tackle healthcare reform legislatively unless it is, in fact, overturned by the Supreme Court, the ACA, that is. Um, the problem with this is, you know, you can't just put another Band-Aid on the situation and hope that that fixes all of the problems. And if he does opt for healthcare reform, he says that he supports a public option, but when he describes a public option at the presidential debates, it doesn't really sound like a public option. So my expectations are very, very low for Joe Biden. Sure, he adopted, you know, some of Bernie Sanders' elements with regard to climate change and spoke with the Sunrise Movement. Uh, does that mean that when push comes to shove, when corporate interests are in his ears, he's going to adopt that exact plan? I doubt it. So listen, hope for the best. Try to do what we can. Push him as much as we possibly can to do good, to mitigate the damage that he will likely cause. But go into this clear-eyed. Go into this not delusional as we were in 2008 and 2012. Don't expect Joe Biden to be your ally. Yes, he's better than Trump. We used him as a tool to oust Donald Trump from power. But he is not our political ally. He has an agenda that is antithetical to what most of the left wants. He is a neoliberal, free market capitalist when we see capitalism destroying our planet, wreaking havoc on our communities. So he's got to take action. And so, you know, I don't necessarily know what to expect with Joe Biden. Him and the Democratic Party, assuming they're able to take back the Senate, have a very short window, two years to act until they either lose the Senate or the House. We have to assume that that's all that they got. If they do not take action, enough action to actually improve people's conditions materially, then they are paving the way for more dissatisfaction and as a result radicalization that will lead to the success of someone like Matt Gates or Tom Cotton in 2024, who I think is worse than Donald Trump. They may not have mean tweets, they may not be as bombastic and narcissistic, but they are real fascists. And if they get power, that will be extremely dangerous. They will silence their opposition. They will consolidate power. They will suppress voters. So Democrats have to act, and it is incumbent on us to pressure them, but more importantly, use this time to educate people. Don't let everyone go to brunch and go to sleep. Let them acknowledge that the Democratic Party isn't meeting our expectations and not meeting their expectations. We support Medicare for All. Why aren't we getting that? We support a legalization of marijuana. Why aren't we getting that? So we'll see. But I want people to not delude themselves into thinking that Joe Biden is their friend. Yes, we voted for him in large part to oust Donald Trump, but nobody is pro-Biden. They're just anti-Trump. I don't think I've ever, ever met anyone who's like pro-Joe Biden. Everybody's just voting for him to stop Donald Trump. So, I mean, at the end of the day, even though Joe Biden is going to resist change, we have to acknowledge that we fight no matter what bully him, pressure him the minute he gains power. On day one, the minute he's sworn in, I don't care about celebrations, get to work. We've got things that you need to do to stop multiple crises from getting worse. So uh, make it happen.